Hi guys, it's me, Bren. Hi, Jason's friends. Okay, I'm back. Part two to mixing your bath bombs. So as you can see, I've got that big clump. That's what you're looking for when you mix your dry ingredients. You want that big clump to form before you ever add your liquid ingredients. So today for the color, I'm using Nurture Soaps Red 27 Lakes. It's really pretty. It's actually not red, it's pink. Okay, and then I scented it with Fruity Fusion. I'm telling you guys, this is the best from Brambleberry. Ugh, well, at least one of my favorites because I'm a fruit freak. And um, I've already primed my presses, which are over here. I prime them with Cyclomethicone on a little oops, paper towel. So you just go like that, just put a dab on there, and then you go up in your press and you'll want to rub it here on the mold and inside on the bottom on the mold so that they're ready. But we're not going to even go that far today and press we're, we're gonna just, this is just a mixing video, just to show you how I make and mix my batter to get those rock hard bombs, make them nice and smooth. I don't go by the rules. I do not use a spray bottle. I used to in the past. It completely ruined my, my bath bombs. I live in Washington state. It's always humid here. It's always raining here. And, um, I just mix so fast that uh, it just doesn't have really time to activate. And as you saw my video this morning, they work just fine in the bathtub. And yeah, it's a go. So before we start mixing, I want to let you know my oven has been preheated to 200 degrees. I then turn my oven off. Very important. Turn the oven off so you don't start a fire. Yeah. But that, as soon as I mold these bad boys, they're going straight in that oven and I shut the door. And that's how they get rock hard in like less than 24 hours. And they come out beautiful. They don't crack. They're perfect. Okay, so without further ado, this is what I'm gonna show you what to look for as you're mixing, how many squirts I put in here, and how fast we're gonna go. And let me tell you, it's gonna be fast. And the reason why I don't use my kitchen aids that are sitting over there is because you have to be fast. They just don't go fast enough for me. My, my mix activates and they end up being really bad bombs. So what we're gonna use is the KitchenAid hand mixer right here. So we're gonna give her a stir. I always give her a good stir at first. Tap it off, grab your trusty spoon. You know, the big one we were talking about yesterday and flip it up from the bottom. I do this every time. It's really important to incorporate your, your dry ingredients that have settled to the bottom back into the mix as they're sitting. So here we go. I've only used half the batter because usually I fill this pretty full, but here we go. I put my mixer on about three to start off with. I'm gonna dump one. fast I'm going. No joke. And I'm grabbing from the side. Two. Make sure you don't let it get any of those little, uh, the little rock balls in there. That means that there's alcohol sitting in there. You don't want that. Break them up. That's three dumps so far. That's good. Grab the side. Grab your little finger. Make sure nothing's sticking to the side. Okay, what you're going to be looking for next, so you know your batter is the right consistency. I know you're saying, Rin, how do you know your batter is ready for you to mold? I'll show you. It's starting to lift from the sides right now. That's what you're looking for. A little bit more squirt. 70% alcohol, folks. That's what I'm using today. I run it along the side of my of my bowl. Keep her 
on the side of the bowl. Okay, she's starting to lift. Do you see that on the side? Good. That means you're done adding liquid. When you see it lifting up on the side, you are done adding liquid. Take that spoon again, grab it from the bottom, bring it up to the top. Give her one more mix. You can see her coming off the side. That's good. Okay, she's about mixed. So, you just let her sit here for a second. And I just go like this. Does she feel wet? Oh, yeah. Did she come up from the sides while I was mixing? Yes. That's what you look for. You know to stop adding your 70% alcohol when she starts to lift away from the sides. It's usually about three and a half squirts. If you're doing a big batch, it's six and a half to seven. And she's perfect. And you, what's going to happen if you let her sit here for a second? She's going to start because, okay, she's going to start to kind of sink. And that's why I'm fluffing her up. Because you don't want her to sink in your bathtub. Your, uh, your mix has to be loose. So just for fun, we'll put her over here. We'll grab my other mix that I have over here. And we're going to do the same. This is a different recipe over here. I'm going to show you again. So you mix it up, tap it off, grab your spoon, come up from the bottom. You're going to get an arm workout, but that's good. Okay, let's go. There's one squirt. Always mix from the side of the bowl. You won't get any bubbles in your uh, bath bombs if you do it this way. Give her another twerk. You have to make it that bomb. Now you're in. I'm telling you, I don't go by the rules. see that see that right there right there when she starts popping away from the side of your bowl stop adding alcohol you are done you do not need to ask yourself whether it needs any more you will know but keep mixing very important. Grab your spoon, lift up from the bottom. Now your second question is going to be, <coughs> Master Ren, do I need to keep adding liquid as I'm molding my bath bombs because my mix has dried out? No. This will not dry out. It, you're gonna this these will make one big batch maybe 15 16 bombs and it will not dry out while you are molding your bombs you will be completely fine the only thing you need to do 
is you need to um, you need to lift up your batter like this so she doesn't get really thick. If it gets really thick, your bombs will do what? Your bombs will sink. My dogs, oh my God, they're gonna be really bad for me, aren't they? Okay, this is gonna be a pink bomb. I'll probably airbrush it. It's got two different recipes. We'll go over recipes later. Um, totally fun to do. I'll show you one, one of the things I'm gonna do with this bomb. Is I'm gonna add some little specklies to it. I'm not gonna do anything fancy with it right now because my dogs are acting up, but we'll go ahead and load one. I'll show you how I load it. I didn't bring an embed in here because I forgot them. Okay, I just put two little scoops in there. You know what I'm gonna do with this bomb to make it float? Poke, poke, poke. That's right, folks. Give it some air holes. No air holes, no floaty. See that? Good. A little bit more mix. Poke, poke, poke. I'm always poking my bombs. Even when I'm swirling them with my finger inside or swirling them with a chopstick, they get the poke. Very important. Okay, so we're gonna use Jason's older um, press with the longer handle. I actually like it a lot. I like them both a lot. They're both really nice. This is actually the tablet mold. So we're gonna do some fancy stuff with it later. And there you have it. A perfectly smooth bomb. Okay guys, I hope that helped. In my recipe, it works super fabulous. We'll see you tomorrow. Actually, we'll see you later today. And hopefully I'll get this uploaded to YouTube and you guys can start working on your bath bombs. And good luck and bye Jason's friends. Have a good day.